Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to look at the which function. So before we get going here, as usual, let's start a new R script. And today we're going to look at the which function. Okay, so the which function uh, is really just a form of filtering. However, instead of returning Boolean values, um, it will return the index. So I'm going to put this in parentheses here. Uh, this is just realistically, you know, the vector's position. So let's just dive on in here to a quick example and let's continue on with what we've been doing. So we're going to create an age variable. Again, if you have variables in the global environment from past videos, please clear those out before we code new ones. Um, but anyways, age is going to be 31, 28, 93, 65, 12, and 47. And we'll run that. And then we're going to say, okay, let's use the which function here. So which age are going to be greater than 30? I'll put spaces between it so it's easier to read. We'll run that. And you can see down here it says, okay, 1, 3, 4, and 6. So what does that mean? Uh, it means in this vector here, uh, the positions 1, 3, 4, and 6 are going to be greater than 30. So, of course, position 1 is 31. That's greater than 30. Then 2 is not on the list because it's less than 30. Uh, the third one is going to be 93. Fourth one, 65. And then again, we skip 12, which is the fifth one. And we go straight to 6, which is going to be the 47th one. So, as this video series has been covering here, right, I'm not just teaching you how to program in R. We want to know, like, how R actually functions and work. So, you know, R functions um, in the same manner as previous videos have explained. Uh, a vector of Boolean values are created and then the position number is returned. Okay, so in this case here, if this is going to look at exactly how this actually functioned. So in our example, uh, we would have had the vector that would have looked like the following. It would have said true, false, true true, false, true. So let's see, one, three, four, and six. Okay, so this would have been the Boolean vector that was created. And then R goes in and says, okay, which of the following are actually true here? And then it returns, you know, one, three, four, and six, as we saw above. So why is this useful? And how is this different? Uh, one of the ways that it's different is that um, this can be used to pull the first occurrence of a value in a vector. So if you didn't use the which function, uh, your, your code here would be longer. And what do I mean by this? Let's just code this out here. So let's say first, we'll call this old, uh, and we're gonna assign to it a function, and this function is going to take the value of some age, and then we'll do the curly brackets. Uh, and do a for loop. So for i in one to the length of age. Okay, we'll end those, do another curly bracket. Um, if age i, so if the ith value inside of this age vector here uh, is going to be, you know, greater than 60, and then we'll put break. And then we have the first curly bracket here, but we want to return a value and we're going to return value i. Okay, so in this function here, this is going to be similar to what we did before, but instead we're going to say, you know, you know, if age is greater than 60, so instead of 30 we're using 60, but we're going to go through this loop where we're going to say, okay, we're going to do from the very first observation, which is going to be 1, and we're going to go all the way through this for loop to the length of age, which is the very last one. So go through the entire vector here, and then when we do that, the condition I want to look for is if age or this value of age, so the first one, second one, third one, you know, through the age vector here, is going to be greater than 60, um, then break. So when it finds the first one, it will stop running as long as it meets this condition, uh, and then it will return i. So that'll be the very first value in that vector. So let's run this real quick. Okay, so now that we have our function written here, we're actually gonna call it. So to call it, we're gonna put in first old, and we're gonna type in age here, and then we're gonna hit enter, and it's gonna return three, okay? so. You know, this, this function is saying that the third 
value in the age vector um, is, is the first occurrence of a value that is greater than 60. Okay, and if we looked at this right, you can see that 93 is gonna be the first one that's greater than 60. It doesn't return 65 because that would be the second occurrence here. So there's just a long way to write this. And now let's look at how to do this uh, with the with function, the which function here. And easier way to do this is to say, okay, first old two, we'll create a similar function here. And we're gonna say function of x, and we're gonna say return which age is going to be greater than 60. It's the same logic as above. And then if this occurs, we wanna return the first value that we find. So let's run this. And then let's run this function real quick here. So we'll do first old two. And then inside of here, we're just gonna plug in age, which is the vector, hit run, and three comes out. So it gives you the exact same answer here. So, you know, this also works. However, it is much shorter code. So this is just one example here. So takeaway from this video, you know, the, this is how the which function works. Um, and I'm also gonna put here as usual, some sort of note. So the note here, so a final note, you know, uh, using the which function uh, to find the first occurrence of a value is a waste of resources. Uh, and the reason for this, right, so the reason is because uh, the which function uh, actually finds all occurrences of the value or condition. So in this case, right, our condition was greater than 60. And then it only returns the first occurrence, which is what we asked for. Um, so we could go on for this forever, right, but, but I'm not going to cover... Uh, how to more efficiently do this, but it does exist, okay? Maybe, maybe we'll cover this in a future video or something else. But anyways, this is just a quick introduction to how the which function works. Uh, a quick example of how you could use it in a real world scenario. Again, this isn't the most efficient way to use it, but it's a way to use it. It's an easy way to understand what it's doing. Uh, again, trying to look at behind the scenes, looking at how it goes through the vectors, gets the Boolean values, and then pulls out um, that occurrence that we're looking for. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.